Hello, in this video I'm gonna show you how to create and simulate rectal reagents and create uh, a simulation like this where you can turn on uh, an agent in a rectal based on uh, some contact and some events. So, let's start. So let's prepare our assets. In this uh, scene, I'm uh, imported the anime starter pack from Arial, and also the first uh, first person um, template that you can import from here. Add feature, then import the first person uh, blueprint uh, template here. And if I open the map, you have the the basic scene for the first person to play it here the basic uh, the basic shooter and dynamics there so let's set up the our mannequin character so in the anime structure pack I already created an agent type with a simple machine with using a single animation what we need to set up is the uh, ragdoll and the collision shape so let's go to the mannequin type so for the ragdoll I already a physics asset that is the ragdoll setup from the anime starter pack that is already there so we can check so it's a normal ragdoll setup that you can uh, you can follow the Unreal tutorial how to set up this, uh, this, this ragdoll and uh, let's go back to the mannequin agent type. We need to set up a collision shape. So for this case, we'll use a capsule uh, with 40 radius, uh, half a 80, and also translation. I think we need to put uh, 80 as well. well. Let's put maybe 85, something like that. Let's check. So let's save, uh, let's create a, an agent in the scene. Group, grid layout, drag my mannequin, let's put my state machine that I prepared. Okay, and let's change the direction. Okay, there is no collision because we need to add the raptor module. Let's set up the collision shape for the agents. Okay, let's try. Yes, now we have collision. Let's check the collision. Let's check the collision shape. Show collision. Oops. Seems fine. Can translate a bit, but for this example, it's fine. Okay, so now we have our uh, capsule and collision shape, and we can detect the collision between uh, uh, the the pr project from the from the player and, uh, and my and my agents. So let's go to the uh, blueprint setup. Of, of the first person character here let's go to the event graph and it's here so we can go here like trace by channel and here I need to detect the, the heat Okay, so what we need to do, uh, what we need to do is to basically uh, generate a ragdoll when uh, this trace uh, collides with uh, with our uh, agent capsule, and then from that we can apply an impulse to the to the ragdoll. So let's go here, and we need from here. We need to cast this component to the 
agent collision component so here is failed so let's just go back to the normal um, normal branch here that will add impulse to the other rigid body but if it's true then we need to handle okay so uh, now we need to get the the owner oh sorry from here we can call the init init red though so um, this this uh, this node generate a ragdoll from an agent uh, we need to tell which agents and in this case the group ID we can take the group ID from the hit item because if it's a uh, agent collision then this hit item return the group ID of the agents okay we don't need the self collision uh, for now and uh, okay so let's try like this oh, so let's print Ragdoll init let's compile and uh, let's check okay so the function is working, but as you can see, it's, it's not simulating the ragdoll. This is because we need to tell uh, atoms to make that ragdoll uh, as dynamic instead to kinematic. So let's go the first pay here. Uh, let's get our agent collision and let's put set uh, ragdoll. So ragdoll simulate physics. We need to tell the group ID as well. Okay, and then let's, let's print. Okay, let's try. So now it's working fine. So let's add some impulse on contact. Let's go from here and just go atoms ragdoll physic. Uh, we can use the add impulse to ragdoll the location that automatically try to find uh, the nearest um, nearest uh, rigid body at, at the hit location. So for now we can use this one. See how it go. So let's take the target. Sorry, that. Sorry, the group ID. And we need to take the location. That is the case. Is this one? While the impulse will be our vector here, so it will be our hands. Let's start. Let's normalize this one. Let's multiply for the impulse magnitude. In this case, let's stack. Let's try with mm, one thousand. And let's connect this to the impulse. Let's compile and let's try. It's too low. Let's try to increase the impulse. Sorry, it's not to touch it. 
here, okay, now it should be fine. Okay, better, let's increase the inputs more. Life 5000. Okay, let's press play. Okay, one thing that you need to pay attention is to the culling, because for example, if I go here, you see that it's disappearing. So what's happening is because uh, the first turn culling is, is using the root joint to see if the agent uh, is visible by the, by the viewport. But in this case, uh, the root joint stay in the, in the position when the uh, red doll is, is set up at the, at the beginning because then all the other rigid body are attached to the to the children of the root root node so if i basically shoot here the the root joint stay in that position if i pass that just disappear so in this case we can uh, disable the first calling. so if i disable the first calling and i shoot I stay here. So now let's have a look to how to set up a, a partial ragdoll. So let's go to our first person character. So now what is happening? So uh, we check the hit component if it's an agent collision. If it's an agent collision, just basically try to generate a ragdoll from that and simulate every uh, rigid body on that ragdoll. Obviously this one is triggered even when uh, you have already a ragdoll and if you have already a ragdoll on a, on a group ID it just keep all this, uh, this function here and just apply um, an impulse here. But what if you want to basically um, trigger the simulation only on specific uh, specific uh, bones instead to, to set for ragdoll so uh, at this point we have the kinematic ragdoll here so what we need what we need to do is to use the is the other function from the ragdoll that is the set ragdoll uh, body below simulates so in this case we can turn on all all, all the bones um, there are children of specific bone to dynamic but how we know which bone we need to to use in this node so we can use some other nodes in this case Let's go to the atom ragdoll here. Uh, let's trace. There is this uh, trace line for ragdoll physical assets that we can use. So this function trace a line and return the heat with a with a rigid body inside a ragdoll. But basically here we can attach here so the bone name sorry uh, we need to set up the heat m here the start and then and the end will be our trace okay and the heat results you can break and you can use the bone heat name in this case here we need to set the group ID group ID as well and the other node uh, let's remove the impulse for now and let's remove also this one
Okay, simulate include self. So let's have a look. Let's try like this now. As you can see, I can turn can turn only partial red doll on, uh, on my agent. In this way you can trace uh, uh, only on the agents. So uh, we need to trace like this because uh, the first time that we hit our ragdoll we don't have all the uh, rigid body set up so the bone name in this case is, uh, is empty and uh, only the second time when the init ragdoll is built then uh, we have a valid bone, bone name uh, here so for example we can uh, we can execute this line trace solely the first time when this bone is known uh, and then after that you can we can use the normal uh, the normal um, flow here and uh, and apply an impulse for example here uh, so there are other other functions like if you go here on rectal for example, you have the add force, add input, specific location. You can also have a break uh, constraint if you want, and other other dynamic function used to query the state of the agent. Let's try the break constraint. So, for example, here you can simulate. Also, you can try to break the constraint there because we have a valid bone name. Okay, let's this one. Let's attach the group ID. Can use the location from the heat result. And we need the bone name. You can add also an input if you want. So let's have a look. So as you can see, you can break constraint as well. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.